Hi everyone, we are back again with another mushroom picture from this page of 16 images from Small Victories by Johanna Basford. And we are at the last one of the top row today. And as promised, I have been thinking about what to do with this one. Now, I decided that I wanted something a little bit different that I haven't done before. Now, I don't think I have ever coloured a pink mushroom so I thought I would just do that. I don't know if they come in pink, I think they probably don't but I just thought it would be a bit different and you know it's nice to do something different for a change. So this is the fuchsia pink and I'm going to be using that as my first pink colour. So behind here to start with. and then around to the edge here. Now I'm actually going to colour over the circles. I want them to be white and uh, I'm going to use a white pen to uh, put them back in later. I find it a lot easier to do it this way because um, I find that it's easier to colour a more even colour rather than trying to go around things. But if you don't have a white pen, you might want to leave them blank. Or you can always use a darker colour for them rather than white. There we go. There's my fuchsia. It needs to be a bit darker, I think, on this end. Just working some layers into the page. Next, I am going to use the, whoops, the light purple pink. I always feel that it's a sort of slightly lighter colour than fuchsia. I'm going to go over this bit of fuchsia here and then take it towards the centre. I always think that it's quite good to colour your mushroom darker on the edges lighter in the middle and then it helps it to look like there's light catching this bit which helps to emphasize its sort of shape and 3d-ness because 3d-ness is obviously a word <laughs> my last color is the pink matter lake which again i'm just going to sharpen a little bit This is one of the lightest pinks, that and the light magenta in the polychromo set. So I'm just going to go over what I've done and keep it fairly light in the middle there so that we, help it. we can see that changing colour. Try and go to the edge though. Same down here. There we are. I'm getting thirsty. I'm going to make a coffee after this video, I think. Okay, so we've got quite the um, rounded look, which I'm pleased with. That's what I was trying to achieve. And I will draw in the, the um, white circles later. No, now, because I want them to dry so I can draw on top of them. Might not work, but we'll see. So Jelly Roll 8. And I'm going to fill them all in. Now, white pen, I would never close the page of a book where I'd used white pen for at least until the following day. But it does actually usually dry fairly quickly. So I'm hoping this is going to dry quickly enough for me to put a little bit of mark on that. Now, when you draw, I'm just going to scribble, it's clogged a bit. When you draw on top of white pen, you need to be quite careful because you can chip it off with a really sharp pencil. But um, it depends on the pen and how thick the layer is and a lot of other things as well, how dry it is. But um, yes, it can chip off. Of course, it always chips off when you want, don't want it to. 
and doesn't chip off when you want it to chip off because you put it in the wrong place. You know, it's, it behaves like that. Now, if the pen's too wet, you can't do two layers because you end up taking off the last layer. But that's fine for me. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to um, colour the um, bit under here now. I very often do my stems grey and I think with pink grey works really well so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a cold grey though because I think cold grey works better with pink than warm grey. So this is the cold grey 4. I'm going to use this for these gills. Put them down quite lightly. Gosh I can hear a really loud noise. A TV or something. No husband isn't watching TV because my son, let's put it dark around the centre, is um, making a video. Um, oh, I know, he's doing a live stream. So, uh, it must be next door. It's very loud. It's okay. I don't mind. Now, right around the brim, or rim, I want a darker bit. And I'm going to actually use an even darker grey. Um, we've got the cold grey 6. I'm going to use that. I'm going to need to sharpen it. It's I want a really fine point so I can just do really literally just a little line. <clears throat> so just way around. Like that and then around the centre. There we go. I don't know how much. Woo! <laughs> you were very drunk. How dare you? <laughs> I don't know how much it really shows up, but uh, I know I've done it. And I'm going to use the, what's this, cold grey 2 for um, the stem. It's quite light, but I'll be darkening it with some cold grey 3 in a minute. I don't want it to be really dark all over. I have a little skirty bit there, which I think is rather cute. Right, so this one I'm just going to sharpen. There we go. Cold grey three. And I'm thinking about why is it going to be darker well up on these sides. That's just generally under here. Then under here, look, it's going to cast a shadow as well um, along that side. But Johanna's drawn lines down here too as if she wants us to put some shadow there, so I'm going to. And then I'm just going to fade that in towards the centre. Like just re-emphasising that shadow there. There it is. I feel like I need to go darker, really dark. Cold grey 6, be careful. It's a really dark colour. I just want to push a little bit under there. Just a tad. I don't know how much that shows up, but there we go. Now, we have our smaller mushrooms. I'm just wondering if our um, if our pen's dry. I am just going to. Um, where's that colour? Um, I'm going to use the. Hmm, I don't think that's dark enough. This colour. Whoops. It is the red violet. Very sharp. And I'm going to use a little bit under each of the white circles. I find it quite difficult to do this. But I'm just doing the best I can. I find it can give the impression that the little white circles are not completely flat against the mushroom, which I think looks better. And I'm going to add 
Oh, which colour? That's it. The cold grey three. I'm going to put a little bit of it on each of these circles, but not trying to put it on top of the white pen. It's, I don't know if it's really working very well. All I can see is that the pen looks more shiny. I don't know if it's making a mark on it. I think it's made the faintest mark. I'm going to go darker. Cockray 4. I'm not going right near the bottom, just a little bit up from the bottom. It's still not really showing up, is it? Let's give it one last try with the cold grey six, and if it doesn't do anything, it doesn't do anything. I can definitely see there's some marking there that's quite faint, but I don't really want too dark because it will bring off the, uh, the white pen will come off. I see some people applying lots and lots of white pen and then colouring over and they do it brilliantly but I think they use a softer pencil. There that'll do. I can see a faint mark and I'm happy with that. Now our little ones. Now I don't want to do them the same colour. I think we might do some purple just to, uh, or some violet actually, just to be a little bit different. But both of them the same. They look the same as each other, but different to the larger one. Let's put you back in the middle. So I'm going to start with this manganese violet. I rather like the manganese. This time I'm going to try and avoid the circles because I think it will be easier. I think it was a mistake um, colouring over them. It made it quite tricky. I'm going to bring that in like that. Also, it's they're smaller, it's a little bit easier somehow. I think this is one of my favourite polychromous colours. I do like all the greens. But if I had to pick one that wasn't green that was my favourite, I think it might be this one. Now I'm going to use the, the um, plain old violet to finish them off. And I want to try and fade them towards the middle like I did with the other one. And I know they'd be shadowed underneath and that sort of thing, but you know. We're not going for photorealism here. We're going for fun and a little bit of technique. There we go. Now I'm going to put a darker shade underneath the um, circles. I'm going to use the mauve. Again, lots of sharpening required. I'll put my sharpener down on top of a pencil. It's not going to work. So just round underneath each one to create a sort of purpley shadow. And then we'll grab, I'm not going to go quite so dark, the cold grey four. And I'm going to put some, a little bit of colour just on the bottom of each one. Now these aren't going to be quite as white because I haven't put any white on, so they're slightly more creamy like the paper. I think that's okay. And then I'm going to do the inside of this bit here with this. I'm going to fade it towards the outside, which is opposite to how Johanna has marked it. I feel it would be darker in there where it's deeper. And actually, I think those lines are probably just the shape of the gill rather than a shadow indication. 
fine. Now I'm just going to grab the Cold Grey 6 just to put a little bit of darker shadow in. Sorry. Um, along the edges. There and just right in that corner. There we go. And now the stem's going to be lighter. I'm going to use the cold grey three for those. So start off quite lightly. And do both at once. Well, both at once. If I had two pencils, I could put one in each hand. I'm thinking it'd be darker here because of the way it's sort of tipped. So I'm going to put a dark bit there and just a dark line around there. And the same on the side, so darker here. I feel there'll be shadow there, a little bit of a line there. And I'm going to grab the Cold Grey 6 again to just put a line across there and there. And then the tiniest dark bit there. There we go, a bit fussy, but why not? Now we've got grass again. Let's try something a little bit different this time. Let's go for a thado green. Again, I want a bluey green. I think it will match our colour scheme better. Here is our thallow green. Again, it's quite vibrant, but it's fine. I don't think it matters. There we go. And I'm just going to use the tiniest smidge of deep cobalt green to um, do some shadow in the grass and the bottoms these and then I'm going to use the dark fallow green to uh, do some grasses like we did on the this one here so really sharp dark fallow green Remember to draw some over the top of the mushrooms. Different heights, don't go underneath. <laughs> there we go, facing them in some different directions. Now we've got our stars left, I haven't forgotten those. I want to do a more lemony type yellow. Um, now we do have the lemon one, but I th also think that's a bit greeny. So I'm going to use this, which is the light yellow glaze. I basically want a yellow that doesn't have any orange in it. Because I'm going to put some yellow dots around. I've got some black dots around. They'll probably not even show up, but the idea is there. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm just going to sweep away. I've got quite a few bits. There we are. That's our first row done already. They don't take that long to do, but I guess that actually looking at the time they take a while they just don't feel like they take long they're lots of fun so there's our fourth one done so thank you so much for joining me um, please do like subscribe and comment thank you for those that do and those that are going to I appreciate it um, yes have hope you have a really super day and happy colouring <laughs>